Hey, um, sorry that I can't be with you to, uh, today to talk about the Calvin cycle, which follows the light-dependent reactions in photosynthesis. Um, but between myself and uh, your proctor who can uh, tag team with me, um, I think we can really effectively explain the Calvin cycle to you. Um, the Calvin cycle is sometimes called the dark reactions or the light independent reactions. This doesn't mean that they only happen in the dark, it simply means that they do not require light to occur. They often stop when it's dark though because they rely on energy from the light dependent reactions to power them. No light, no power. So as you watch this presentation, use the word bank uh, above the top of your paper there to fill in the blanks in the worksheet. Some of the terms will be used more than once, some won't be used at all, um, but they're there to uh, help you out as I explain the Calvin Cycle to you. So, the purpose of the Calvin Cycle is to fix carbon dioxide. To fix a molecule means that, that it is converted by a cell into a form that the cell can use. The Calvin Cycle takes place in the stroma. of the chloroplast and like in the light dependent reactions there are many chemical reactions that make up the process and I've condensed these into four easy steps so here in step one um, carbon dioxide is fixed by an enzyme called Rubisco Rubisco adds carbon dioxide to ribulose biphosphate which we can call RUBP for short RUBP to form two molecules of phosphoglycerate, or PGA. Notice that in this process, six carbon dioxide molecules join with six ribulose biphosphate molecules to form um, six molecules that have six carbons total. Why aren't these drawn in the diagram? Well, because they fall apart spontaneously to form 12 molecules of PGA. Each PGA molecule has only three carbon atoms. That's step one. In step two, ATP and NADPH that were made during the light dependent reactions are used to convert 12 PGA molecules into 12 G3P molecules. The number of molecules of ATP used in step 2 is 12. Number of molecules of NADPH used in step 2 is 12. So you can see that there's one ATP and one NADPH for every conversion here. When ATP is used, it's converted into AD ADP. You can add the plus P if you want to think about it like that. And then in step two, each PGA molecule receives one phosphate from ATP to produce an intermediate molecule called 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde, or PGAL. That would be right in here. Some books show this and some books do not. But it's PGAL that takes the high energy electrons carried by NADPH um, that are used to convert them into molecules of something called glutaraldehyde 3 phosphate or G3P for short. I'm pretty sure you're happy that we're only using acronyms here and not these long names. In this step, ADP and NADP plus are formed and then they can be used again in the light, de light dependent reactions to produce new ATP and new N NADPH. So what of this G3P? Why do we spend so much energy and time making it? Let's look at step three. So in step three, two molecules of G3P are going to leave the cycle. And they can be converted into glucose or a lot of other organic compounds. But glucose is certainly one of them. 
So, if we have 12 from here, we make take two away. I'm sure you can do the math and realize we're going to have 10 G3P left. Well, what do we do with them? Well, we've got to get back to here. And so we're, let's look at step four. So we're left with 10 G3P molecules. But in order to start the cycle over, these have to be converted back into RUBP. So an enzyme called Rubisco converts the remaining 10 G3P back into six five carbon compounds. And this completes the Calvin cycle. The RUBP is replenished and then it can be used again to fix more carbon dioxide. This conversion of G3P into RUBP um, is going to require some energy in the form of ATP. So taking a look at the entire diagram here, take a minute to pause the video and explain why the Calvin cycle is called a cycle. So, I'm sure you can see um, from the picture that it's a cycle because we start in one place, step one for instance, and we travel through a series of steps, but those series of steps are going to bring us back to the beginning again. Just like a bicycle wheel that goes around, cycles go around in a circle and come back to the beginning again. And that way they can keep running over and over and over again. Now in reality, each carbon dioxide molecule enters this cycle individually. And so this means the cycle must happen how many times? Six. Six times in order to make one molecule of glucose. It's interesting to note that Rubisco is the most abundant enzyme on Earth. Think about this cycle and its importance to plants and to living things. Why do you think that Rubisco is the most abundant enzyme on Earth? Pause the video and take a minute to answer that question. Certainly you can see that uh, um, plants rely on this enzyme in every one of their chloroplasts to uh, help complete this cycle. And without this cycle, uh, plants aren't able to photosynthesize and make sugars. And if plants aren't able to do that, then animals aren't able to, to, to eat them and, and get the energy from them. So uh, Rubisco is a pretty important enzyme. Now plant species that fix carbon exclusively through the Calvin cycle like this are known as C3 plants. And that's because they fix carbon into three carbon molecules. Our PGA had three carbons. But that's not the only way that plants can do this. Two alternative pathways for carbon dioxide fixation are the C4 pathway and the CAM pathway. CAM, C-A-M. Plants that use these pathways live in climates that are hot and dry. And um, that's because there's a dilemma that they, that they place, that they face. Um, let me explain that dilemma with a little bit of anatomy of plants. And you know, I'll use the diagram you see on the slide now. So stomata here, these little holes, um, are pores on the underside of leaves. And on hot, dry days, these are closed to prevent the loss of water. But the problem is that when the pores are closed, not very much carbon dioxide can enter the plant. And since carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis, this creates a problem for the plant. Also, when the stomata are closed, oxygen cannot escape, and therefore it builds up inside the plant, inhibiting the Calvin cycle, believe it or not. So the alternative pathways exist to help photosynthesis occur despite uh, low levels of carbon dioxide that occur when the stomata are closed. So alternative pathways are ways that the plant can use the low, low levels of carbon dioxide present when the stomata are closed. 
and using these low levels the plant can carry out photosynthesis. So using the information above, take a few minutes to explain in your own words the reason for alternative carbon fixation pathways. And you can pause the video while you do this. All right, so you can see clearly that uh, plants would use these alternative pathways in areas that are hot or dry to be able to store some carbon dioxide for a while um, while their stomata are closed so they can keep doing the Calvin cycle even when they can't get new carbon dioxide. So in the C4 pathway, carbon dioxide is fixed into, you guessed it, four carbon compounds instead of three carbon compounds. And during the hottest part of the day, C4 plants have their stromata partially closed. However, certain cells have a special enzyme that can fix even low levels of carbon dioxide. In the C4 pathway, a molecule is created that carries carbon dioxide to the other cells where the Calvin cycle functions. And this minimizes water loss while allowing these four carbon compounds to enter the Calvin cycle. You can see that there are sugarcane and corn are two examples of C4 plants. A lot of grasses are C4 plants as well because they live in environments that are drier um, than you might expect. In the desert, uh, stomata are, o are open only during the night. Um, and in, in the CAM pathway, uh, CAM stands for Crassulation Acid Metabolism Photosynthesis. Um, this, is what hap this is what the plants do. They uh, keep their stomata closed during the day. When the CO2 does enter the plant cells, it gets fixed into a variety of organic compounds. And during the day, the CO2 can be released from these compounds and used in the Calvin cycle. Water conserving plants that live in harsh environments like salt marshes and deserts and at high altitudes uh, use these process. Some examples of uh, plants that do this are cacti, orchids, and pineapples. So, look at the chart below um, and review your knowledge of the Calvin cycle, the C4 cycle, and the CAM pathway. Take a look at those uh, six statements there. Place a check mark in the correct column. Be careful because some statements might require you to check more than one column. After you finish this activity, if you have any questions, be sure to ask the proctor for clarification. Um, he can or she can start a discussion. You may also want to check out um, a couple of videos um, that I've left with the proctor um, and I'll also send to you in an email if you would need some further clarification. For homework tonight, and you can certainly start this uh, in class today, um, use your notes, your textbook, um, the videos that I gave you, talk to the proctor, and any other relevant resources to write an original, original raps or hip hop song that explains the Calvin cycle. You can certainly use a melody from another um, song if you'd like. Write your song lyrics down on a sheet of paper, but be prepared to perform your rap tomorrow and then submit your lyri lyrics for homework. Hope you enjoyed the assignment of the Calvin cycle. I look forward to joining you again when we can talk about both the light-dependent reactions in the Calvin cycle of photosynthesis. See you tomorrow.